I'm going to say greetings, this is Kabanka Pyramid representing the Lion Voice Vlog. Make sure that them check it out and stay tuned. See? Rastafari blessings every time. I say, I say all of that to say that the importance of the celebration of this day, uh, the Christmas holiday, is really about celebrating the birth of Christ and not to get too technical as to the historical date. Once you start getting to that, and when I read His Majesty word sound, I realize that's the perspective His Majesty is also coming from. Well, Lion Vice, tell them that's the people first choice. Lion Vice, make the lion let them feel nice. Lion Vice, be the lion comes with sacrifice. Lion Vice, got to show the people them the life. Lion Vice. Greetings in that divine name of his imperial majesty, Emperor Heliai Selassie the first, King Rastafari. Glory and honor in the name of his chosen queen, Empress Waziro Menen. My name is Kwasi Bansu, aka the Chasmach Kwasi, aka Ras Kwasi, aka the Reading Ras, aka the Pan-African Happy Man. I'm an entertainment attorney, I'm an author, I'm an artist, I'm an actionist, and right now, I am the host of The Lion Voice. Welcome to episode 53. And I want to say Malcolm Gena to all of my Ethiopian family, all of my Rastafari family. What is Malcolm Gena? Malcolm Gena or Malcolm Ledet, some people say Malcolm Ledet. This is Ethiopian Christmas. We just had the Christmas episode which is now one of the highest performing videos on the channel. I just want to say give thanks to all of you who watched the video, who shared the video, who commented on the video. Uh, give thanks, that's how we grow, that's how we progress the conversation. I myself uh, learned you know, from that uh, exploration into Haile Selassie's teaching on Christmas. These are things that, you know, as young Ras, we visit, but sometime in the, in the Chad, you don't visit those things as much you, you move on to other things so really uh, opened up some some definite um, epiphanies in terms of uh, the task that lies ahead of us and these are things that we recognize as as young Ras but now you know as we come into our maturity it becomes even more evident uh, the necessity for uh, really diving deep into the teachings of His Imperial Majesty and Pride of Selassie I the First. So again, we just want to give thanks. But this episode, we're going to talk about Ethiopian Christmas. Why is it on January 7th? And remember that all of the Orthodox churches celebrate Christmas on January 7th. I started to do a little research to find out what is the history. And when you dive deep, what you find out and what you recognize is that nobody knows the actual historical date of Yeshua birth. Let's just put that out there. Uh, most of these conversations didn't happen until hundreds of years after um, he disappeared from, from creation. So nobody has a definitive date. Uh, a lot of people uh, think because of, you know, indications that it would it would have been in the spring there was a census you know the the, sh the flocks were in the field at pasture um, these things typically don't happen in the winter so a lot of biblical historians uh, put it in the spring um, it was actually celebrated in May uh, by the early Egyptian church and this is a, another key thing when you research the history of the church remember the church in Alexandria and Egypt was the center of Christianity before Rome, you know, um, before uh, Rome adopted uh, the Christian faith, Saint Mark, who wrote the Gospel of Mark, traveled down into Egypt, into Africa, and this is what was the basically um, the head church before it was usurped by the Roman influence. They celebrated in in May. Um, there was a council that came together. We talked about that in the Christmas episode and December 25th was decided. Uh, December 25th 
and the orthodox date had actually coincided for some time but this is one of the things that lets us know how power is distributed in the earth because he had a pope named pope gregory and pope gregory uh, was an astronomer and studied the stars and decided he wanted to change time and through his edict and through the power of the catholic church uh, which we as Rastafari know is one of the more powerful institutions on the planet um, Shadow government, we talk about that in another episode They were able to change how time was recorded So the Julian calendar, and for those who are not familiar The Julian calendar was um, popularized or implemented by Julius Caesar Again, another Roman So all of these um, time measurements and the Ethiopian um, are on the, the, the Julian calendar so this is why Ethiopia is seven years um, behind they stayed with that that older calendar but remember these calendars also we have to also recognize are based on calendars that were taken from Kemet uh, from Egypt so you know everything always gonna go forward to to Mama Africa however um, it's important that we know that the celebration I say all of that to say that the importance of the celebration of this day, uh, the Christmas holiday, is really about celebrating the birth of Christ and not to get too technical as to the historical date. Once you start getting to that, and when I read His Majesty words, so when I realize that's the perspective His Majesty is also coming from, um, you know, the universality, you know, uniting forward Christendom. These were part of the, the mission as a defender of the Christian faith. Um, the scope, even though we hail him as the Almighty, he was the Almighty for all, or he was King of Kings for all humanity. So the mission was vast. And what um, the epiphany that I had in terms of the Christ consciousness and the mission in terms of his Majesty saying that, you know, based on the sacrifice of Yeshua, the hearts of man became the temple of the most high and manifesting that god with himself you know when we talk about emmanuel which was yeshua's uh name uh, given emmanuel means uh the almighty is with us so that you know knowledge and even when we used to listen early sizzla kalanji and he would say emmanuel um you know i used to equate it to yeshua not really early in my child not really knowing the fullness about Prince Emmanuel until I learned more about the Bobo Shanti trad and about um, you know from the elders who actually trotted with Prince Emmanuel I was able to get the history of why the Bobo Shanti um, revere Emmanuel in that manner and big up all of the Bobo Shanti family but this Emmanuel concept this Christ concept and Prince Emmanuel speaks about it he says man of right is God in flesh this is a central concept that we have to reinstitute into Rastafari again because to inhabit this Zion on earth this heaven on earth that we talk about so much on this channel you have to have that divine uh, people who are going to inhabit it or else they're going to carry the same trauma the same dysfunction into a new space I grew up in Scarborough Ontario as a as a youth until I left for university and growing up in Canada it shows you that no matter how nice the accommodation the ghetto is a mind state because they had some beautiful Ontario housing in Canada um, when you looked at it it looked like a condo people would be paying big money for them type of accommodation in America rec room all of these things big up Alton Towers as we said that because Alton Towers was my uh, community you know on um, the little area I was from I was in the suburban side but we had the Alton Towers um, which was Ontario housing and different things and guess what happened you had men that were robbing places living over there shatter bus all kind of things happening over there even though the accommodation would be considered first world status you go to a place like Malvern in Toronto you know, if you're outside, this looks like a beautiful place, but only for things happen there because of the mentality. So, if we're building heaven on earth, 
and we don't fix up the inside and manifest that Christ tradition that almighty within man that almighty within woman we're not going to be able to manifest this heaven on earth it might as well be building a country club because that's the same vibes because the the heaven on earth that the, the, the wealthy people have today you know yes they have these idyllic settings and if you've ever been able to rub shoulders with real wealth and be on some of these spaces they look like heaven on earth I've been blessed to be able to you know uh, visit some of these spaces on the earth and I'm telling you it's heaven on earth but the cost that is paid the wickedness that the people who inhabit these spaces had to accomplish to get there means that these spaces oftentimes will not be sustainable and that's not what we're trying to replicate as we talk about Zion and Earth we're talking about something with a strong foundation, divine foundation, where you get there through righteousness, where you work with the community to build and the community itself benefits so there's no this kind of slave labor uh, uh, and so forth that fuels a lot of the, the current luxury uh, that exists around the world. So this Ethiopian Christmas, I say all of that, where am I going with it? One of the things that we have to emphasize is that highly Selassie means the might of the Trinity. What is the Trinity? Um, according to the Ethiopian tradition, it's three and one, one and three. Father, the Son, the Holy Irits. You know, um, some say man, woman, and child. We see highly Selassie crowned with Empress Menin, the baby in her stomach. You know, that manifestation of what that looks like in real life. Uh, in the Naya Bingi, we look at uh, the Godhead, which would include Melchizedek, the priesthood, which would include Haile Selassie, the divine king, and include Yeshua, who is the prophet, all um, exemplifying different um, parts of the characteristics of the Almighty in flesh and bone. Melchizedek being the priesthood, setting the, the order, um, you know, without father, without son. Um, you know that you know if you look at the Hebrews description of Melchizedek is the same kind of Christ archetype um, and it even says Yeshua came after the order of Melchizedek he established the priesthood before the Levites were there original Congo man we look at Melchizedek as being the same Congo man from that time uh, you know and big up Sizzla is the first artist I ever hear sing about Melchizedek um, until I went into the Naya Bingi order and got a greater overstanding. Then you have His Majesty who set the governance, the Father, you know, so that would be the Holy Spirit because, again, without beginning of days, ending of life. So the Melchizedek would be the, the physical representation of the Holy Iris. Then you have Haile Selassie as the representation of the Father because guess what I'm after do? Haile Selassie is the man who have to set the government make sure that the thing runs make sure all of the children are educated all of the responsibility that's the father the son is Yeshua the prophet you know the irony of prophecy Yeshua what, what did he do he informed the people woke up their spirit uh, rise them but he did not have the responsibility um, other than you know showing them a uh, proof of concept meaning feeding the multitude but he didn't have to do that day in and day out decades and decades he didn't have to build a nation he didn't have to you know go through international diplomacy that task monumental again the almighty himself have to manifest to establish the foundation yeshua is there so all of these different uh, manifestations again manifest that trinity haile selassie happens to be the might because he also preceptical meaning he secured the independence of the Ethiopian church. He was able to navigate um, ecclesiastical manners. Probably the foremost uh, biblical scholar to ever walk the face of the earth. Um, having read, you know, having been versed in several languages and trained from a child in the Asian scrolls in Giz, uh, translated the Bible into Amharic. That was a big part of his life. Even from 1918, His Majesty said he started that journey of translating the Bible um, and it was interrupted 
you know, he was getting ready to, to, to translate it from Ge'ez to Amharic and it was interrupted by the Italians invasion um, and then he still was able to um, finish the work while he was in England and get the the Amharic versions of the, the Bible shipped in so this is a major part of Haile Selassie's vision for his people in terms of enlightening them about the Christ consciousness and the Christ tradition um, but again responsibility of the father so we celebrate on this day Ethiopian Christmas the birth of the son Yeshua because he provides the archetype in which the manifestation of the father walks on the planet when he manifests to fulfill this work so all of them feed Yeshua walks in the order of Melchizedek who, who manifests before he manifests in the physical form so all of them you know uh, feed each other and it's the ideal father-son relationship because the father glorified the son the son glorified the father it's a balance what me say the father glorified the son meaning that Haile Selassie all he talk about is Yeshua when you go into the Bible all Yeshua talk about is the father my father who is in heaven the kingdom that is coming on earth all of these things Haile Selassie I established that righteous kingdom on the throne of David in the holy mountains of Ethiopia the only um, nation that had not been conquered under the foot of white supremacy um, and colonialism and now that manifestation spreads through the four corners of the world and it cannot be stopped Rastafari is just one of the impacts but there are several impacts um, the African Union the OAU is, is, a, is a product is a fruit of that uprising uh, but there is so much more and we're just at the tip of the iceberg His Majesty said that Africa's un uprising will be unparalleled in human history uh, and we await to see that fullness I say all of that to say family that this Ethiopian Christmas let us reflect on Yeshua Jesus Christos his majesty um, is very clear what he says and I want to just read another little piece from the same uh, speech he gave to Dr. Hoffman um, on December 25th I just want to read a little piece of that speech um, where his majesty talks about um, again Yeshua Dr. Hoffman um, he says your Imperial Majesty, the birth of our Lord is observed by peoples throughout the world in different ways. I know, and I should like to ask you how you observe the feast of the nativity of our Lord within your own family and household. So this is telling what Ethiopians do on the Ethiopian Christmas. This is coming from Kadamawi Haile Selassie I. His Majesty says, the birth of our Lord is a joyous family event. However, I do not only rejoice with my kindred and family, since the whole Ethiopian nation is my family. I say this in the context of Christmas being observed by all churches in Ethiopia. I rejoice on this occasion also because of Iesos Christos being given for us, for he was born in the lowly place and got warmth by animals this fact encourages us to celebrate it with joy so you see his majesty bringing our attention to the lowly circumstances that the almighty manifests himself into the physical form the warmth of animals and people who study his majesty know the affinity and the love his majesty had for animals animals were throughout the palace you know cheetahs you know uh, lions all different type of dogs you know um, he had a whole uh, zoo basically in the palace and you know his majesty related very well with the animals uh, kangaroo so many different animals so um, it's a beautiful thing and he goes on to say when I have visited the five large continents I have not been anywhere where there was not a church all over the world I have come to know that the birth of Jesus Christos is celebrated so this truth 
has been spread around the world and his majesty is championing this truth so all the people who born in Yeshua under the guise of Rastafari Israel and we have to be clear about this because the wheat and the tears grow together till the time of harvest but the confusion because it's one thing if you are born Yeshua and then we can see your works and you built an alternative that we can say makes sense but a lot of people born in Yeshua and their works don't match up to Kadamari Haile Selassie the first works who is championing Yeshua so who do we as the children follow who do we as the children follow it's clear who we follow Haile Selassie the first and in this Armageddon Iowa or this time of Armageddon we're returning this child um, under the leadership of his imperial majesty Haile Selassie without apology and big up everyone who has been sending the messages in the comments this is what we're talking about when we talk about the Rastafari man standard uh, highest performing video on the channel up to this time so definitely um, just want to take this time to big up all of our Ethiopian family again on this Ethiopian Christmas and we're gonna talk more about Yeshua there's a lot his mindset he has a lot of speeches uh, and different content where he talks about Yeshua um, so this is a key in terms of how we are moving how we must move to survive what the beast has planned on the earth and we're gonna do some content this year about the global reset um, some of the plans that are coming down um, the 2030 initiatives because Babylon has the concept of heaven on earth for them as well we have to examine does it jive with what we decide again this is a solution channel we're building the Rastafari man to lead the Rastafari future it's time has come for the lions to tell their own story we're building our kingdoms while stepping out of Babylon jungle these are the values on which this channel will be built so stay tuned with us as we go through let me just do a little housekeeping we want to just say give thanks to all of the um, subscribers steadily growing um, and it's very humbling uh, the comments are starting to come in a little bit more frequently and that again every time I get a comment it makes I day even if you don't agree because we love the reasoning so don't feel like you have to agree if you don't agree with something write the comment let's have the discussion um, and build again this is solution channel so we're not going chase like market you know chasing and all of these you'll never find I'm undoing that and those who know the works know that is not my speed but in terms of reasoning because I can always update if I'm not correct on something I'm forever a student so I want to see that uh, this year we have so much planned again we're gonna be starting our interview um, episodes we got a, a, a fire nice interview with Raslick coming up the the DMV DC Maryland Virginia's number one uh, artist in terms of reggae um, sat down with him so we're gonna drop that interview um, shortly we have uh, more episodes coming the relationship episode I've been promising working I have a potential sister has agreed so we're just working out the details that's gonna be um, and a nice episode as well uh, we're gonna be going on the road again we have trips planned uh, so whole leap of things uh, coming this year make sure to subscribe hit the like button hit the notification button and let's grow the channel let's build together uh, also I'll be sharing more of, of my transition as we build in Ghana West Africa um, and transition the family uh, you'll see it us in terms of uh, how we're building on our land different things as well so so much um, content coming in the future our plan is to monetize the channel uh, so we can uh, create the economic engine to help to fund some of the other initiatives if you see behind me you see uh, some of the things we we've been planning building uh, out the Empire uh, we're gonna have a lot more legal episodes we're gonna be talking to creatives uh, we're gonna be doing a lot so 
again this is just a start we're gonna invest in equipment all of them thing that once we start monetize but again uh, this is the future for creatives creating your own ecosystem um, I'm gonna get back on the open mic scene and start uh, building out my artist uh, persona and brand so I'm gonna be sharing all of that with the item so you can see uh, as we go through the steps of building out uh you know an ecosystem for independent artists i'm going to use myself and show and share for all the independent artists out there so all of those things are coming um, because the time has come for the lions to tell their own story and this is the lion's voice, Lion voice. Well, the leaders of the world are feeling their responsibility to lead the youth them to a brighter future. Well, I and I, I and I hear the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Earth's rightful ruler. Our ghost, we lost the far I crown. Uncomfortable. We come to tell them now my Babylon, they're falling down. The far right is Uncle Lou. We come to tell them how the we lost the far I crown. Me come to tell them Baba Babylon They're falling down to far right This uncle yo Me come to tell them about Holy Papa is intrigue In fighting with Queen Solomon see Well them press tight to want her family to lead Well King Michael want him some to lead But King Michael Now watch the orphan Mary to him niece who get up every day and a study and a read He work and he pray every day He achieve them so you go leader Every ancient leader just to wave us the far right crown Uncomfortable Me come fit and them Baba Babylon They're falling down to far right It's Uncle Lou Me come fit and them out They wave us the far right crown Uncomfortable we come to tell them from a Babylon They're falling down to far right This uncle yo Well that's Michael Son was having a good time When he should mind The affairs of the state Cause he's descend from the great line Of men that like the second But he's stepping on toes Of his elders Treat his women like hoes He exposed Now we working with the Ottoman Turks Say he's descending from Muhammad But that's not how this works See the crown was anointed by the Orthodox Church So if you are ruling as I don't have to put Christ first 